up, people? The incredible drum pad is DJ Manny Fresh, and I am Soul Culture. You heard me? Um, my first work was like underground New Orleans stuff. I mean, some of the stuff that people most know me for is Lil Wayne, Juvenile, uh, T.I., Young Jeezy. Um, I don't know, like most of the cats that's in rap, like, you know, I've done some beats for them. The music is all over this city. Like, this is a music city. The culture of this city and everything is crazy. Like, I mean, like you're saying, it's just your first time being here and even to be in this district around here, you see it all day long. You see musicianship and crazy people that just love music. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm still taking inspiration from this, from, you know, whenever I'm, here, whatever, in this area, whatever, you always pick up 10 things that you didn't know just from just hanging around, like, you know, so that's the incredible thing about New Orleans. You could just hang out with some people who you just met and you're gonna leave that room with like 10 things that you didn't know, 20 things that you never experienced, like, you know what I'm saying? So that's what's so great about this city. Everybody got a story, everybody got some kind of way that they can improve on you if you listening and you paying attention. Hell to the yeah. I wish they stop. <laughs> nah, I'm playing, but I mean, I kind of, this is what's going on right now. Southern music is kind of stuck to me. It's one way. It's just 808 snare rolls and hi-hats. Like, you know, and I get it. Like, I, I love that all of these cats grew up on Manny Fresh Sound, but I'm looking for a little bit growth though. You know, I want something to change. Like, I think we've been in that same spot for long enough. Let's just say, like, we done done that. Like, it's time to move on to something else. You got New York rappers that sound like they from the South. East Coast rappers that sound like they from the South. And I'm not saying nothing is wrong with that, but what happened to the East Coast sound? What happened to the West Coast sound? Like, I just, I don't, you know, that's all I'm saying. Like, show me some growth in it. Like, you know, at one point, rap had Public Enemy. Public Enemy was our pro-black. We had Slick Rick. Slick Rick was our storyteller. We had N.W.A. N.W.A. was our gangster rap. You know what I'm saying? And you had Cash Money. That was your bling bling. That's four different genres of rap. You don't have that right now. Now it's just based on the club. What can I do to make you shake your ass and dance? Like, you know, and, I, and we don't have nobody. Like, hip hop to me growing up was a teacher as well. It was a culture and as a teacher. Like, you had the, you had the choice of saying like, okay, today I wanna hear something positive. Today I wanna hear something that's all about the hood or whatever, you just don't have that right now. I guess it is out there, but what I'm saying is the labels are not gonna push that. The labels are going like mainstream. If we want you to look like this and sound like this. We're not gonna take a chance on that artist that's heartfelt, like that artist that's going hard with his art or whatever. Like, you know, you gotta go underground to find that cat. And I'm not saying nothing is wrong with that, but at the same time, he needs to be heard too. He got a family, he got dreams, you know, so why not give him a chance? I think if I got a position and a label said, well, you know, we'll give you your situation, it definitely wouldn't be the norm. Like what people would think, like, you know, they're probably like, well, you know, he probably would go find just some 808 crunk music or whatever. It wouldn't be that, I can honestly say that because I'm so many different people till it's nuts. Not that I, I wouldn't want that, like I want that person too, but I also want different varieties of, you know, different things. <laughs> Hit Boy, Lex Luger, uh, Drummer Boy, like, you know, it's, it's a couple of cats that's doing their thing. When, when you use the word next generation, I still think the people that's relevant are still this generation. I would say Kanye West is still, you know, relevant. Like, no ID is still relevant. Um, you know, it's just that the, the days of the super producer is over. I would say Pharrell is still, the Neptunes is still relevant. Like, you know, they, it ain't like they fell off. People just stopped paying the money that they want. That's what it really is. I mean, that was crazy because this dude, his idea was to get all of these talented people together and put them in a room and see what comes up. Like, you know, other than that, none of us would have never met each other or never vibe like that. So I, I mean, big ups to Kanye for going like, hey, I'm gonna put a dream team together that's just gonna kill it. Like even meet, meeting Drummer Boy and seeing his process of how he doing beats, like uh, I'm, I'm me meeting somebody, you know, that regardless to if I thought I was gonna meet him or not meet him, 
in London or getting with Kanye West going like, man, this dude really put a team of people together that's like, oh my goodness, like this is nuts. This, that was my first experience with Hit Boy. I met him before a long time ago with Polo when he was just kind of like under Polo or whatever. But when I actually had to sit in the studio with him and see his process of how he make beats, you know, very impressed, that's all I can say. Like, I mean, I'm used to working with people hand on, you know, because that's what I, that's the era that I came up with. So we gonna work till we figure out something. And I think that's what everybody appreciate about the Good Music Project, because it's a factory. Like, you can go work with whoever you want to work with till you get that magical song. Till you like, hey, dude, we gonna sit here and figure this out till we get it. So I think it's a nuts idea. I mean, it ain't been done in the last 10, 15 years. So I'm gonna put a bunch of talented people in the room and. Let's cook up some gumbo. What am I most proud? Keeping it real. Like, you know, like, I've never had to apologize for nothing. Every song that I've done, I've always been able to defend that song. I don't think there's a lot of people that could do that. You know, like, if somebody asks you, what was you thinking or what was your mind frame or whatever when you was doing that song, I've always had an answer for all of my songs. Like, you know, so I think that's what I'm most proud of. The producer thing, just took on a whole face of his own. Like, I never really set out to be a producer. I'm blessed that, you know, people look at me like that, but I've always came in this as a DJ. Like, you know, but I love DJing, and DJing is helping me get back in touch with what's going on right now, if, even if I like it or don't like it. But, you know, you gotta get your ear back to the streets to know what's going on. I mean, every day, I'm gonna do at least three or four songs. That's what I do, you know, but, my heart is in DJing, like, you know, that's what I love. Like, I don't really think I'll never sign with nobody again. Yeah. That's just me personally, like, you know, I just don't want to do no record deals with nobody. Like, been there, done that. I think I am want to be free for forever until, I, until the lights come out, that's all. Me and dude has always been cool, you know? I don't have a problem with, with nobody. Like, you know, shit, Drake used back that ass up. He came, but he did his business himself. You know, he made sure it was taken care of. So if you do your business right, we'll do it. But if not, like, nah, I'm not doing it. I'm too grown for that. Well, you see that in, like, dude has always been hungry from the very beginning. He's always been, like, the first one there, the last one to leave from early on. So, you know, it all pays off. And on top of that, the hardest thing in the world for a man is to not be jealous of another man's success or envious of another man's success. You had to know that this was going to happen to him. Like, I mean, come on, like, the dude was great at what he was doing when he was young. So, obviously, like, it's his turn, you know, and it's going to come around. It'll come, you know, to anybody that work hard at it. And he works hard at it. You know, he knows that I got to put work in. I got to do this. Like, that's that's what's lacking with a whole lot of cats. Like, they just like, you know what, I just want to do this, get my chain and get my little money, and I'm moving on. This is so much more than that. It's hard work. It's dedication. It's all of that. I mean, that's, that's what I do. Like, I love doing music, and you got to look at it. That's what Wayne was programmed to do. That's what we come up on. People are like, how come he put out a record every day? I'm like, that's what he been doing. That's what, you know, any of us that, you know, love this and still do it that's what we do like I, I mean even when i don't feel like doing it i'm gonna turn on my drum machine and do something because i'm programmed to do it it's like being in the studio with a rapper and he tell you he can't think of nothing i'm like you're not really serious about this shit shit should be flowing out of your head this is your job this is your only occupation this is what you get paid for you should be inspired like just by this is a great ass job i ain't got to get up and go to work nowhere <laughs>